Good morning. It's uh, time to pay some attention to the uh, Vans Battery Bank. Uh, and before I go any further, uh, I'm not an expert in this, so uh, be careful what you're doing uh, yourself. I put a solar system into my van at the beginning of the build uh, that was based on a 6 volt or 2 6 volt uh, golf cart uh, batteries, lead acid, and it's time to uh, make some upgrades to that. At the time these lead acid batteries uh, were really the way to go, they, they were cheap or at least affordable uh, and they're well understood, you, you know what you get. Uh, they had some uh, issues though, um, they were heavy, they're big uh, and because they're big with the two 6 volt batteries uh, I only got the 100 amp hours in, in power so we started to consider lithium batteries. Lithium batteries have become way more promising uh, for a while now, but there's still a lot of issues uh, to be dealt with. Um, and that's, that's changing, it's getting uh, easier to apply. But they're still finicky uh, with issues like uh, keeping them uh, balanced correctly and uh, charging them uh, below freezing. So it's still complicated, a complicated issue. But there's a lot of information uh, to be found on the internet, as I can tell you. But since I'm starting to move into the van soon, uh, I came to the conclusion that it's time to uh, make the step to uh, lithium batteries and uh, replace the existing batteries for them. Uh, there are two opportunities, of course. You can buy, uh, like the Battleborns, which are just drop-in batteries. But they're quite expensive. Uh, most are around a uh, thousand bucks for 100 amper hours. Uh, although I've seen prices come down as well. Uh, but the big differences between them, the, the quality is a, is a problem. And what I think I understand right now is that the lithium is not really the issue anymore. It's mainly the BMS, the battery management system. Uh, and there's a lot of difference in that as well. For most people, a drop-in lithium battery is probably the best solution. Um, but then I start thinking about the, uh, the possibilities. If you're talking about a $1,000 a battery, uh, I cannot really have more than two. So I've got a mac at maximum a 200 amp hour battery bank, uh, which would be still quite expensive. Uh, say close to the two thousand dollar price mark which is on on itself already getting close to the same price as a good AGM battery system but that's still lead acid uh, while the lithium has, has a lot of advantages uh, over, over lead acid but I wanted to see if there was a solution uh, to go beyond the 200 amp hours uh, in, a, in a battery bank uh, and I think that I, uh, I found something. And I found that many do-it-yourselfers uh, creating their own battery banks from individual cells and BMSs and putting that together in a system. And while that's not for everybody, uh, I think uh, that it's, it's within my capabilities to put that together with a little bit of luck and some guidance. Doing some research, I found a lot of uh, cheap lithium uh, berry cells available uh, and it usually you need four cells to make one 12 volt battery. But that uh, cheap BMS, that, that's still a problem. Um, you can find BMSs, good BMSs if, from between 400 to about a thousand bucks or so, uh, but that that price is just defeats the whole purpose of a cheap battery system. So this is what I came up with. Uh, yesterday I ordered eight lithium iron phosphate battery cells from China and that'll take another month or so before they will arrive so it'll take some time. Uh, and I'll be putting those together in two sets, two sets of four, so two regular batteries more or less. And each has its own uh, BMS for about $750. But you always have to remember that 
you have to add a lot of things to that. There are a lot of risks though. Um, and you may get in over your head. Uh, and maybe I'm, I'm too, so we'll see how that works out. Um, it is a gray market. So the batteries, they should be grade A, the best ones. But uh, I still assume that there's a little bit less quality or less, less uh, capacity which isn't really a big deal uh, in the application that I'm using it for. And then there are a lot of variables uh, that you don't know what can happen. The capacity of the cells could be uh, an issue. Uh, resistance could be an issue. All kinds of electronic issues that I don't have enough experience with. Uh, and so. I don't really know how that works out, so it's a work in progress. And putting the cells uh, together is, is not really a big deal uh, from what I know. Uh, you have to put the cells together uh, and the BMS is uh, added to that. Um, you have to create a box uh, for them to sit in, uh, the cables, the lugs, uh, all the other connections, fuses of course. And after all, uh, after you've done all that, you still have to integrate it in the remainder of the uh, solar system you have installed. And I don't have an inverter charger yet. That will be the next step after that. So you have to be able to put everything together so that it uh, really works well together. And, and that we'll see how that works out. It's, it's complicated. It's not that easy. So now I have to wait till uh, New Year approximately before I'll see the uh, batteries. Uh, but that gives me the time to put all other things together like the battery box, getting all these, the supplies like the, the, the power supply, uh, multimeters, wiring, um, heat shrink, lugs and, and, and so on. So if you're considering uh, doing the same thing uh, as I'm doing, uh, I put some resources on the website. Uh, and I put a link of that uh, in the description of this video uh, or you can uh, click over there and now you have to wait a week for another video uh, so uh, thanks uh, for watching and see you next week hi guys this is Joey and we're building a one-of-a-kind RV thanks for watching our YouTube channel if you enjoyed the video give us a like and subscribe or better yet uh, leave a comment thanks guys done a good job.